This video is intended to provide some help on the concept of load impedance as it pertains to the function generator that you're going to be using for your experiments. This is a common problem that you might experience if you're not aware of what's happening with a function generator or some of the functionalities. And uh, let's quickly review what's going on here. So I have just my function generator connected to a 220 ohm resistor via the BNC to micrograbbers. And then I have my oscilloscope probe here. I have the positive on the positive side and the alligator clip sharing common ground with the circuit. When I look at the functions that I'm generating, it's a simple sine wave with an amplitude of one volt peak to peak, but my oscilloscope says 1.7. So what's the reason for that? The reason for that is that your function generator in reality is actually a voltage divider. If you are working with something in multi-SIM, I can simply put a function generator here, no problem. I can connect it to my circuit, there's no issue. But for safety reasons, function generators actually have a 50 ohm termination. So if you look here, it says 50 ohms. It also has to do with certain historical reasons relating to RF standards back in the 30s and in the 20s. But all you really need to know is that your actual function, function generator that you use in the lab is a voltage divider and it obeys a voltage divider rule. So the voltage that the function generator states is what it believes is experienced by the load, but it doesn't know this load impedance. You actually have to uh, input that to the function generator. So here from the top menu, I'm in the top menu now, I'm gonna to go to output menu and for channel one, which is what I'm using at the moment, I'm gonna change that load impedance. I'm gonna say load 220 and right away it compensates. Right, I can go back, put one volt peak to peak. And now these values are matching. So the function generator, given that it knows that this is a voltage divider and it has a 50 ohm termination, knows the voltage that it has to create here in order for the load to experience one volt peak to peak across it. And it follows a simple voltage divider rule. So. It's not anything too complicated, but oftentimes you are going to be confused by this because if you haven't figured out what the overall impedance of your circuit, and of course in the future you're going to have something much more complicated than a simple resistor. You may have uh, reactive elements in your circuit as well, or you may have an operational amplifier, or whatever it happens to be. Uh, you need to know what this impedance is and compensate for that. If you don't do that, then you just have to trust the oscilloscope value, right? This may be incorrect here. The nominal value may be not matching, but the oscilloscope value is, is correct. So that is um, just a, a brief overview of what load impedance is, and hopefully that clarifies any questions or confusions you may have.